All right, guys, welcome to my 2023 race recap. Uh, I guess better late than never. I wanted to get this video out sooner, but here we are. So I uh, had three big races last year, Canyons 100 in Auburn, California, the San Juan Solstice up in Lake City, Colorado, and then the big dog, the fat dog, uh, the fat dog 120. That's how we ended the season with 2023. So got the Western States qualifier, got the big tune up, and then we hit uh, the big hard rock qualifier. So it was a big year, um, started a little bit rough. We'll go through all that. Go ahead and hit the like uh, button for me, hit the subscribe button. We're gonna take a look back on 2023 and see what we did and how we earned a couple buckles and a whole lot of fun. Let's go. All right, so like I said, we started the year off in California, Auburn, California. Um, and, and really, let's go back. So in January, January 2nd, I was skiing. I tore my ACL, the meniscus, and some cartilage um, in my right knee. It looked like my season was over. I was very upset. Um, I had big goals for last year. Obviously, every year we got big goals, right? So um, that was tough. And then saw the doctor. He told me, hey, if you're feeling... Like it's all torn, your, your knee's torn, but if you feel like you can continue running, go ahead and train like you're gonna train for a race. And I don't think he knew who he was saying that to exactly, um, but what I heard was sign up for a 100 miler and start training. So that's what I did. Canyons was the one that I picked. Um, early season, it's in the end of April. And with all the snow that we had last winter, it was, it was crazy. So they had one course planned. They changed the course sort of last minute. It was really, really close to race date when they decided to go from um, a course with much, much more climbing to something with much less that both started and ended in Auburn. Um, yeah, I mean, it, to be honest, this race seemed like they were just getting by by the seat of their pants, like nothing seemed very well organized. Um, the aid stations weren't great. Um, yeah, I don't know. The, <clears throat> Not my favorite race. Maybe, uh, maybe take that in consideration when you're choosing races for the year, and you know you see all these by UTMB races. There are some awesome ones. Speed Goat right here in Utah. That's a by UTMB race now, but that is a phenomenal event. But man, Canyons just not for me. But we'll go over some stats. So let's see. Da da da. It was 102 miles. 16,867 feet of vertical gain. I got 48th place out of 128 finishers. I think there was something close to like 300 people who started, well over a 50% DNF rate. Um, I thought I would have had that written down here. If we get to it, we'll get to it, but yeah. Oh yeah, right here. So 128 finishers, 150 DNFs, that's insane. And the reason why is the heat. The heat was crazy. Like the week of race day, it was saying that high temperatures were going to be 70, 80 at the most, but like mid 70s. And then by race day, it was like high 90s. Um, really, really rough day out there running. Uh, my elapsed time, it was 26 hours, 20 minutes and 53 seconds. Moving time was 24, 54, 55. That means I only really stood still or didn't do anything for about 25 minutes. Um, I had eight sub 10 minute miles and then I had eight miles that were over 20 minutes. Um, so I had about 86 miles between that 10 and 20 minute range. Pretty good pace. Average pace was 15, 27 per mile. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it considering I melted down multiple times really early in the race. I think I oversalted, um, recovered from that later, hadn't been eating enough calories, recovered from that. And then it was just... You get into the second day of heat and I couldn't recover, pretty much walked it in. Um, huge thanks to Sarah for walking a lot with me instead of running, which I hope, uh, or I think she was hoping to do as a pacer. So yeah, it, it was tough. Um, I, it was a nine hour drive for me to get out there. Um, like I said, record high temps. Um, the day before, this was big, I ran like 12 miles the day before in two separate runs. That was probably stupid. Uh, the day before you're gonna run a really hot 100 miler is not the best day to go run a half marathon. Um, I wanted to see the course. It, you know, it kicked me probably in, you know, 
when I, those last 20 miles of the 100 miler really sucked, probably a lot due to having ran 12, 13 miles a day before. But um, yeah, things that got me through this race were sparkling water, Coca-Cola, and maple syrup. Without those three things, I would have never made it. Um, it was just so damn hot. And like I said, the aid stations, this race, it was the first year for the 100 miler and you could tell they did not, they were not set up to support 100 mile runners through the night. Um, in my opinion, listen, uh, people expect different things. I, I expect, especially by a big name race with lots of sponsors, that they would sort of have the aid stations um, figured out. They really didn't. You would get to, get to an aid station, they wouldn't have any food ready, they'd be like, we can cook for you. And it's like, that's awesome, I really appreciate that, but I'm in a race and I'm trying to not sit here. Like, uh, really, I would show up to multiple aid stations and they would have z nothing prepared, zero. They would have to make it when you got there. So, big disappointment. Um, crux of the race, there was no drop bags till mile 50. I really felt like for my Solomon Advanced Skin 12, I was carrying a lot. It felt really heavy, really weighed down, um, which obviously influenced decisions I made later in the season. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Yeah, so pacer pickup. It was at mile 68. You can only get one. It's the only spot, and they had to go to the finish with you. Um, so that was a big ask. Luckily, like I said, Sarah, super down. Um, yeah, I can always count on her to come out and get me to that finish line, just like at the AC100. Woo, I'll never forget that night. Um, yeah, let's see. So yeah, mile 75. I looked over the Strava data. It seemed like that is when I just... I, I fell down into a ditch of slowness, no eating, you know, mental low, and uh, just couldn't recover. So it was really a, a solid marathon of just walking to the finish line. So that was tough. Like I said, got eight UTMB running stones for doing this race, so that's good. Once I get to the point where I want to consider making the trip out to Chamonix, um, it's nice to know that now I have 10 points. That seems pretty good. I'll sh I'm sure I'll rack up some more as the years go on, but uh, probably not next year. Um, yeah, so that was Canyons. Uh, I'm going to show some highlight clips after each one of these little race reviews. So, um, yeah, here's some clips. Yeah. Race morning. The lows are coming early today. Fuck, I'm just gonna have to walk it out for a while. I don't know, just walk until it's gone. Like, maybe I need to throw up too, I don't know. So once we got past canyons, we got the buckle, 26 hour finish. Um, you know, I was just happy to get there, honestly, and, and really reset my focus onto Fat Dog, because that, you know, qualifying for Western States is honestly a second thought for me. I'm not dying to go out there and deal with all of that. Um, I'd like to run it, that's about it. But Hard Rock, as you know, I mean, look, Hard Rock hoodie, Hard Rock hat. I was the aid station captain at Chapman. I love Hard Rock, and I want to run it more than any other race, um, hands down. Got to get out there, got to run it. I've volunteered three years now, um, and yeah, it's it's the goal. So every year we pick a Hard Rock qualifier. 
last year it was Fat Dog. And so what we need to do, um, it's super important for a race like this. I'd never been further than 100 miles. Fat Dog was going to be around 125 to 130 miles with nearly 30,000 feet of gain. Um, so I really wanted to stress test some gear. That's why I chose to do the San Juan Solstice 50 miler as a tune-up race. I thought it would be a nice long day. Um, not a 50 miler you're going to get done quickly. And yeah, so it was a great way to test out my pack, uh, shoes, of, you know, the Solomon S Lab Ultra 3, they're, you can't go wrong. So didn't really have to worry about that, but the pack, you know, what I was going to wear in cold weather situations, um, gloves, make sure that just everything, my nutrition, I learned a lot of good tricks at San Juan that I used at Fat Dog. So nutrition was a big focus there too. Um, and yeah, just to have fun, film a good vlog. And I think we accomplished all of those things. Uh, let's go over some of the stats for the San Juan Solstice 50 miler. So it was actually 49.4 miles. I always hate when it's not quite there. You feel like, should I keep running? Should I just run around a little bit just to round it off? But of course I did not. Um, there was 12,280 feet of elevation gain and descent as it is a giant loop around the San Juans. Um, so let's see, 14 hours, nine minutes and one second. I was 120th over 201 finishers. There were 90 DNFs, so not too many. Pretty good rate, but it does show. The cutoffs uh, in the first, let's say marathon, are pretty tight. You gotta move, and a lot of that is climbing. Um, so if you don't get your ass in gear, the cutoffs might get you, even if you're not necessarily like a worrying about cutoffs type of person. So um, that's definitely something to think about with this race. Uh, moving on, so the moving time, 13 hours, 13 minutes, uh, 46 seconds. I actually had 56 minutes of stagnant garbage time. Um, not great. I was focusing on filming, so there was a lot of times where I'd just be standing there, looking at a view, getting something done, but I really did bonk close to the end, and there were a lot of times where I'd have to just kind of chill for a minute, catch my breath. Um, the elevation was tough. There's a, a section in the course, I think it's mile like 22 to 32, where you're above 12,000 feet. So 10 miles, you're very high up. Um, it, it got to me that day. I haven't been able to spend too much time up high in lead up to this race, so it was tough. Uh, let's go through it. So sub 10 minute miles, I had zero. Um, Plus 20 minute miles, I had 16, so about 33 miles between that 10 to 20 minute range. Um, average pace was 17.11 per mile. Fastest was just over 10 minutes, slowest was 31 minutes. And again, that's including stopping at aid stations and stuff like that, so. Uh, yeah, elevation, the minimum was 8,600 feet, the maximum was 13,335. Average elevation of 11,004 feet, so. Like I said, that was really killing me that day. It was hard to eat, um, and that's where I picked up some tricks. I was really doing like a little Jolly Rancher in the mouth. I always had one in the mouth to deal with like cotton mouth and um, just to keep getting some sugars down there to get a little energy. Obviously Coke, uh, that was huge, and the maple syrup. And then I was doing this thing where I was taking Oreos. I had all these Oreos with me, and I would just put one in my mouth, start chewing it, and then swig down a bunch of water and that Oreo just dissolves into nothing and you can just swallow it. So it's really easy to eat, even if you feel like a little sick, um, you know, elevation kind of So that was working really well and came in very handy at Fat Dog. Um, yeah, so let's see. It says here, relax pace, almost missed first cutoff. Like I said, the cutoffs, I, I was just out there having fun. I wasn't racing this at all, but for sure, I was like, there's a bunch of people behind me, and I was like really close to some of those early cutoffs, so that was pretty crazy. Um, I ran with my good friend John Sharp for a while. We did the whole first climb together, essentially. Um, the river crossings were so cold. My feet were freezing. Um, if you've looked into this race, the first few miles, maybe like seven miles, has, I don't know, seven to 10 river crossings, depending on the year and you know the height of everything and they are cold, so cold. So you go through one, you're cold. You go through the next one, you're like, yeah, I'm getting colder. And there's like seven in a row. So 
that was really brutal. Um, early morning up high, it's just like you have no chance to warm back up until later in the day when you're out in the sun. Um, yeah, stomach not happy, was not loving the elevation. Like I said, this was a bucket list race for me. Anything in the San Juans is bucket list. I, I want to do year A. It's a tough time of year because I like to go out to Hard Rock and it's literally like the following weekend and my wife's birthday is right there. So one day we'll get to that. It'll probably be post running Hard Rock um, for the first time just so I can keep my commitment going. And then, yeah, happy but hurting. So I was in a great mood the whole time, but definitely uh, the last 15 miles were, you know, I was in a lot of pain. It's, it's not technical where like you're... Um, having to do any sort of like dangerous, like don't fall kind of stuff. But it was technical in the fact that like, it's very rocky. It's very tough footing. This was a snow year. So there was a lot of like off trail kind of thing going on. A lot of fell running, if you will. So um, yeah, it just beat me up. It beat me up for sure. Um, Paige was at the finish line. That was awesome. Um, I love having her there. It makes me uh, just really appreciate, <clears throat> you know, getting out there and then getting back to what matters. Um, so yeah, I, I wrote down here at the end in all capitals, do this race. So highly recommend the San Juan Solstice. There is a lottery process, but it's not crazy. You probably have a 50% chance of getting in if you've never applied. Um, and yeah, so San Juan was a success. The pack did me well. I used that black diamond pursuit 15. I pretty much had decided on all the layering and gloves and everything else I was gonna take and dialed in my nutrition. So we were gonna be looking good heading into Fat Dog later in the year. tank is empty having a run in just really short bursts oh all right last but not least guys uh fat dog 120 this was I mean, the whole life in a day thing, Billy Yang. Um, man, this was a couple lives in a day, a little over. Um, I felt like it never ended, and I also couldn't believe how quick it went. Um, so yeah, drive out to Canada. It was a long drive. I think I drove for 18 hours from Utah to my Airbnb, which was about a mile from the race. It was nice. I spent a couple days just hanging out. Um, went for a shakeout run like the day before. And I felt awful. Um, I was short of breath. I felt like bloated and just beat up from the car ride. So I was a little worried, um, but little did I know Fat Dog 120 was gonna end up being one of my best performances yet. Um, especially considering every time you go past how far you've ever been before, 
it's scary. It's tough. You wonder, can I, can I last? I've had issues finishing X distance. How am I possibly going to go X plus Y, right? So there's a lot of unknown, a lot of driving out to an unknown. And yeah, so I was on high alert for this one. I, you know, I just, everything that I was doing leading up to this race was big vert, big days out, focused on the long run. Um, really, really, really was focused on getting a finish. And the goal was to get a sub 36 finish. Um, they have two separate buckles. Obviously, I have the uh, Beyond 36 hour buckle here as it is not full colored like their logo is. But either way, I, and we'll go through it. I had one of the best races of my life and really like I had the absolute transformative experience that you look for when you go do one of these 100 milers. I wasn't frustrated with the aid stations. I wasn't, um, you know, worried about really anything. All I had to worry about was myself. I didn't have a crew. I didn't have pacers. I went out there alone and I had business on my mind. So let's go over some stats. Let's see, 127.8 miles. That's, um, that's what it ended up being. You know, I, I knew going in that it wasn't going to be 120. All the maps I'd seen were longer. I just, uh, I kind of let it be what it was going to be. Once you get to Lightning Lake and you know you only have that last loop, then you're going to know how long it's going to be. So I just let that be. Um, <clears throat> there was 26,801 feet of vertical gain. In 100 miles, there was like tw over 22,000. So this is very much so on par with your typical hard rock qualifier, like I'm tough, Wasatch, um, Angeles Crest, like tons of vert, really vast course. Um, I mean, you cover so much ground. I'm going to be putting in a couple images of things here and there, but you cover so, so much ground during this race. It's absolutely stunning. And yeah, so my moving time, oh, my finish time was 37 hours, 21 minutes and 24 seconds. I was 18th overall out of 78 finishers and there were 63 DNFs. Um, I definitely wanted to DNF at some point. If you've watched the video, you know when I was coming down that road, I actually called my wife. It's the only place on the whole 127 mile course that you have service. And I told her, oh, I wanna drop. And she said, you gotta dig deep. This is supposed to be tough, keep going. And so uh, that fueled me to do, you know, have one of those moments that you always dream of having. Um, but yeah, so continuing on, my moving time was 34 hours, 27 minutes and 19 seconds. So that was, really two, almost three hours, two hours and 54 minutes of wasted time, standing still at aid stations, sleeping on the course. I slept on a log in the middle of the night. Um, yeah, so that that right there is where I lost my goal finish time. Um, was definitely an idle, idle time spent at aid stations, but man, during the night when I was bonking, it was just tough. I had to collect myself every time I got a chance, and uh, that's what I did. So sub 10 minute miles, I only ran three out of 127.8 miles, but I only ran 28 miles that were 20 minutes or more. So I had 96 miles between 10 and 20 minutes. Fastest mile was a 939 and that was mile 127. So <laughs> I'm super proud of that. That last loop, I was running like an animal. We'll go over that later. Um, but to see my final mile in the race be a 939, that is insane. Um, my slowest mile, and this is definitely because I sat at the uh, aid station at mile 80 for way too long, um, was 42 minutes and three seconds. So that was a whole lot of time of just eating breakfast, trying to get some food in the stomach because I was fully bonked and exhausted after the night. Um, so that's what we had to do. We had to take 42 minutes to uh, hang out and reset. Overall, not too bad. Average pace of 17 minutes and 32 seconds. Uh, minimum elevation, pretty low, 2785. Maximum was only 7600. Average elevation, about 5200 feet. So if you're trying to avoid hard rock qualifiers that are super high elevation, super high, um, then maybe this is a good one for you. It's got tons of climbing, but it isn't super high up, so you don't really have to worry about too much elevation sickness and, and things of that nature. Um, yeah, so during this race, I ran for 16 hours, 48 minutes, walked for 18 hours, 28 minutes, 
And like I said, I had about almost three hours of idle time. So yeah, something to be thought about moving forward. And I've worked on this at certain races, but sometimes you just don't have a choice. You, you have to stop and reset and you have to eat and you have to convince yourself to keep going. Uh, that happens a lot, but it is what it is. Um, some things to think about with this race, obviously, <clears throat> if you're from the US, travel is huge. Like I said, I drove 18 hours uh, and that was tough. That, that if I didn't have a couple days before the race, after getting there to readjust, eat some food, hang out and collect myself, I think that could have really been a problem. Um, I felt flat before the race, like I said, on my shakeout. So it was, it was honestly like crazy the way my body rebounded on race day and I just felt fantastic while I felt fantastic. Um, obviously there were times where I didn't, um, two hour shuttle to the start. So this is one of the parts about this race that makes it, it, it's like you, you can't possibly imagine how much harder this would make the race, but it does. You have to wake up very early, park, take a shuttle from the parking to where you take a shuttle to the race start. So you actually take, get on a bus and that leaves, I don't know, at like 7 AM or something like that. Cause the race starts at 10 AM. This shuttle, it's, it's a school bus. You go east, yeah, east on the Trans-Canada Highway out to the start of the race. So the start of the race, when we were driving out there, and keep in mind, two hour bus ride, I'm, I'm dying. I'm ready to get on my feet and get running at this point. But when we're pulling in, all the fires were pretty much one canyon over from the start of the race. So we're driving this bus through just thick, thick smoke. Everyone was like, oh God, what's going on? Like, are we going to be, is this what the race is going to be like? Um, but as soon as we pull out of that canyon into the next one over where the race started, it was fine. There wasn't any smoke, but once we got to the top of that first climb, you could see it all. But yeah, so think about having to wake up at around 5.30, shuttle to a shuttle to the start of the race where you hang out for a while. Um, it's just a lot of already having been up, already, you know, your breakfast was potentially four hours ago at this point. Um, so it's something I had never dealt with that was very different and honestly challenging because by the time you're most of the way through the night, I was so exhausted. I was so tired that I had to sleep. I slept on a log. There was a log cut in half, took the pack off and middle of the night, just laid on my back and, and slept for what I hope was only about 10 minutes. Um, so yeah, smoke was everywhere at the race start. Um, we ended up, uh, in a perfect place in the conga line. So they do this little out and back to kind of spread the field because there's this pinch over a bridge before the first climb. Um, so I made sure I got to a place where I wasn't going to be stuck behind people who weren't going at a pace, um, that I wanted to be going. So I think I ended up in a really good spot. Everyone around me was pushing, but not over pushing. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. Um, yeah, so I felt really solid through the first 100K. I was barely stopping at aid stations. I was eating a lot of food. Everything felt good. You know, the shoes, the pack, all the, all the gear was working perfect. Um, yeah, like I said, I was really tired during the night and took that nap. I think it was only 10 minutes, but to be honest, I have no way to know other than looking at Strava and trying to judge how long that little spike was of not moving. Um, yeah, through the night, I was moving pretty slow at times, but I kept moving other than taking that nap. So that was good. Once we got to mile 80, I had a big breakfast, took that big reset for that 42 minute mile. And, uh, I think after that, I really started to be able to like, that was one part of the race getting through, you know, day one and, and night one. And then this was, I was just like, this is separate. This is something else. I'm on a new run now. Um, and that's how it felt leading into the second day. And yeah, so kept moving, just moving a little slow, was still able to run all the downhills though. Um, and then the final loop at the end of my race video, there's a clip, it's all black. You can't see anything cause it's nighttime and it's just me breathing super hard, but in rhythm. And I did that for the whole last like half marathon loop, which, um, so the way it was described to me, you do this big climb and then you kind of circle around this peak. But then when you get to the top, they have what's known as the six bitches. So they're these really steep and it's one after the other. So it's kind of like false summit city and keep in mind, we're mile 120 at this point. And I remember just 
sprinting most of these miles, what felt like sprinting, running the uphills, just digging into my poles. I had a terrible blister on my toe and I just said, fuck it. And I just kept running, panting. I was passing people, but at this point, you're really with all like the other distances. So you have no idea if you're passing 100 milers or not. Um, I think most of the people I passed were not even in my race, but it just, it drove me. I was driven. And one of the coolest parts about this, so, you know, heading down into this final loop was this big long road section where I called Paige, told her I was gonna drop, and she convinced me not to. I'm going up this final climb to the six bitches and I get re-energized. I start blasting out the miles and you can look at the calendar. There was a meteor shower this night. It was clear enough in some spots. So as I'm just full on Zach Miller, uh, panting like an animal, just grunting, running by people and there's meteors flying through the sky, like one every 20, 30 seconds, big red meteors. It, it was just an incredible night. And then um, another Zach Miller moment, if you listen to any of his interviews after UTMB, he said that there was a while where he was in front of Jim and he thought Jim was right behind him the whole time because his headlamp was making a noise that sounded like footsteps. And I had that same moment where I passed this guy. He had actually passed me at mile 80 at that aid station. And I didn't catch back up to him until the very end of the race on this downhill. And I pass him, I'm panting, I'm running as hard as I can. It's about a nine, 10 minute mile. And uh, yeah, so I, I hear this noise that my pack was making that just sounded like his footsteps and I just was driven by it. And so I kept running and running and running and panting and would not let up. And uh, I actually almost got lost at the end. I was super delusional and out of it and just you know in the zone, like that animal mode and uh, someone had to like point me over a bridge and to the right place so I could get to the finish line. And uh, yeah, when I got there, there was no one behind me. Um, you know, it was just, it was insane. Um, that, that way to finish that race with an all out effort for so long, I mean, it was, it was almost three hours that I ran like that up across the bitches and down. Um, and so that was really like, I call it my AC 100 moments because I just had you know, some moments during that race where something else takes over and uh, it's incredible. So having that for so long, I mean, nearly three hours of pushing like that and uh, to get to the finish line and see the race director, who's such a great race director, um, all these aid stations were perfect. You know, they really knew what they were doing. Um, they know how to support 100 mile runners. So this is definitely one of those, if you're looking through that hard rock qualifier list and trying to pick out maybe what you want to do in the coming years, this one needs to be on that list. It is an absolutely incredible race. I love the distance. I love that it's over 100 miles. You feel that it's over 100 miles. It's not just like 105, 107. It's long and you feel it. It's got a lot of vert. Um, it's got everything. The views were immaculate. You'll see in the clips. Um, Everything about this race, buckle included, is just fantastic, but definitely some things to think about. Make sure you plan correctly. Make sure you have the gear. Make sure you space your drop bags proper and understand your pacing. Because, um, yeah, you're out there for a long time. I mean, I got 18th place out of 78 people, and it took me 37 hours. So, you know, there weren't that many people. I think only one guy came in under 30, and... Uh, maybe like 10 or so under 36. So it's a tough race. It'll, it'll test you. And I, I couldn't recommend doing it more, but, uh, yeah, here are the clips, baby. Roll. Them. <laughs> Yo, baby. <laughs> all right. All right. All right, dude. I mean, it's obviously, I think every year they change this, but this is how I love for races to start. How are you guys doing? Excellent! <laughs> Major 
aid station with the drop. Uh, excuse me. Wow, you guys must love pass. And uh, yeah, tomorrow's supposed to be. One twelve, and I fell in. <laughs> so I'm wet feet. So not a big deal. That with a coke in hand, and uh, their tailwind tastes like. You heard that <sighs> bod in that creek like i said i fell in refill food in my pack and then i'm getting in and cheese quesadilla and now we're on the third of five <laughs> good enough so I'm gonna put the camera away for a while um, I'm moving feeling good let's keep this going and, <laughs> and this side of death marching for many miles. thousand feet of vert I think I'm at mile 83 I don't know when the last time I did an update was. 96 miles, 22,000 feet of gain. I make myself okay with uh, being out here another. We just go right past Manning Park. Good way though. So that's the year in review, guys. Uh, 200 milers, one actually 100 and nearly 30 miles at Fat Dog, and then that nice tune-up race with the San Juan Solstice 50 miler. So it was a great year. It was a perfect year, considering I started it out January 2nd, destroying my knee. I honestly can't believe that I was able to finish any of these races. Um, just super thankful. Um, moving on to this year, I do have big plans again. Just in a few weeks here, I'm going to be running the Rufa 24 hour uh, here on Squaw Peak. So hoping to get about eight summits over 24 hours. That would be that would be key. Anything extra is, is gravy, but anything under, I will be a little upset. Um, after that, uh, let's see. Gorge 100. We're going out to Cascade Locks right between Oregon and Washington. Um, 100K. This is a Western States qualifier. Um, Sarah is running it as well. I think I have one other friend running one of the other shorter distances, so it'll be a nice Wednesday night run crew uh, meetup out in Cascade Locks. So excited to go out there and, and get the qualifier for Western States done. And uh, yeah, I've, I don't even know if I've officially raced 100K before, so this might be my first one, um, which is also cool. I will definitely be going for a quicker time. Um, you know, not a lot of vert. Actually, I think it does have a lot of vert. I think it's like fourteen to 16,000 feet in that race over 100K. So um, 